Well, good morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. So, what I'm doing this morning is measuring up for a canopy that we're going to put above the beer garden to keep the rain and possibly uh, shade any drinkers. So, what I've put together is a little sketch on this notepad of basically the layout and design with a few dimensions on there. I've also put my hand in some muck. Don't know where I've got that from. So uh, to give you a bit of an idea of what's what, that's the kind of thing that we're aiming for. And uh, the cloth that I'm thinking about using um, is the kind of stuff that you'd use for um, awnings outside a butcher shop or something like that, for instance, or uh, they often use it for making outdoor furniture like bean bags, seat covers, that kind of thing. I've got a few samples in the brewery to show you so we'll go in there and have a look at that in a moment. Uh, and my plan is because they come about two meters wide so we'll kind of have uh, three of them like this. Imagine that leaf there's one, that's two and my hand is three but we'll just overlap them slightly like this so when we have the rain cascading off they'll fall from one to the other and they'll be on guide wires and they'll be on a pulley system so we can retract them all the way into the wall during blustery weather you know and when it's lovely we just wind them out pull them straight out and they come straight across the top of the beer garden that's the plan whether this is going to work or not is another matter so uh, got a few more things to go and do in the pub now but I've got my dimensions we can go and have a look at the cloth and uh, at the website where we're possibly going to be ordering this from and while we're here of course we can have a bit of an update on the wall she cleaned up quite nicely didn't she I do plan on taking the camera across to the other side of the canal or even on the bridge and showing you a couple of shots from that angle because it looks sweet. Just out of curiosity folks, we've also had a new POS system delivered. We're about to sign up with these fellas. Clover. Does anyone know anything about them? I know a little bit because beer heads use this particular POS system. Fingers crossed they're good, but they've sent us a big old box full of tackle. Big box. So it'd be nice to get this all set up. There we go, look. Well, that's kind of uh, the actual a picture of the actual terminal there. I think that's what we've got. The cash drawer and all that jazz. There's some pricing look as well if you're keen to have a look. So here are a few swatches, if you like, of the material that I've got in mind. So this is the one that I think is going to do it. It's 6.49 per square meter. And it's lime. And uh, it comes in at 1.5 meter width. And you can see it's pretty, pretty durable, but it's also lightweight. So we're not putting a lot of, I can't tear it, even down these edges from the pinking shears. So I think that will be good. It's flexible, you see, it'll fold into curves. So that's number one for me at the moment. I think that will be good for, there we go, gazebo covers, rattan furniture, parasols. That's what it's good for, and it's fire retardant. This is the same material in l'orange. Of course, depending on what colour scheme we want to go with in the garden, I do think that the lime green is a better one. Uh, but this is the same stuff. Um, this is a slightly heavier duty version of it. This is actual awning fabric that you'd get outside on shop fronts, you know, like your butchers or your patisserie. This though is $18.99 a square meter. It's three times the price. It feels a little bit more durable. It, well, it's definitely more durable. It's harder to form but the price difference I don't know if it's worth it it's certainly not as uh, transparent as this one if you get my drift 
you can see you can't see any light through the uh, expensive one. Again, here's the same version in orange or slightly yellowy colour. But I don't know if I can warrant uh, 1899 per square metre. And uh, finally I got a little swatch of the blue because we weren't sure, sure what colour we were going for. But I think it's between these two. It'll be a nice awning colour on top of the uh, top of the beer garden. It'll look pretty good. So the company, KTB Limited, Carlton Business Centre, Saltley Road, Saltley, Birmingham. If you're interested. Put that at 6.49 to me. Lightweight, cheap. And then we'll kind of double hem it on the edge. Pop some rings in. And then off those rings we'll be attaching, or maybe even attaching it to uh, like we did the Roman blinds. Think of it as a Roman blind laid down and it'll fold out, concertina out across the beer garden and back in like, like that. And I think it's strong enough, it definitely feels durable enough to, uh, to be worked with. Shall we have a go at ripping it then? Come on, a real. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that hurt my hands. I think it's pretty strong stuff. So maybe that is the right one to go for. And it's 6.49 a square metre. If I make a mistake, it's not too expensive to replace it. And if it only lasts us a couple of years, then we can, of course, upgrade to the expensive stuff. And we'll already have the wire and everything in place. We just have to change the material out. I think it's the right move. Considering it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. Wow. Quarter past two. I've just come away from ordering all the cloth for the cover for the beer garden and we put together a steel order from DC Iron and uh, I've sent him a quote to see if he'll laser cut me an H. Harrison's Brewery silhouette to go in the middle of the, f you know, the wrought iron gates. So this is kind of a little bit of a list of all the things that we're looking at ordering. Uh, so that's 40 by 8 flat steel, 30 by 8 flat steel there for the frame. Then we've got pickets which have a basket in the middle. So we've got a twin picket and a single picket. You can't really see very well on this printout. 12 by 12 square bar, some hinges, some eye bolts, a heavy duty padlock bolt, some rail heads to go on the gate, uh, some punched bar so the rail heads can stick through and then you weld them on top. Some 100mm diameter ring goes. And then on this side we have a little bit of box. Oh no, their suggestions. So that is all of it, that completes the order. And that will come to £306.64p to make iron railings, three sets of iron railings and one security gate for the side of the building. So this is kind of how I envisage, envisage, <laughs> envisage it looking. A little bit like this. I think I've shown you this little picture before. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve once it's complete. I think that'll look lovely. And then also on this side, that's basically what uh, the side gate's going to look like. Although I've changed the proportions on the side here, look. So that circle section will come down a little bit. So that's going to be the side security gate. There's a little sketch of the canopy. And view from the canal, the dimensions of the brickwork. Which I'm pleased to announce, even though it says 2060, 2025, we just went for the full bricks. Which is where we've lost a little bit of uh, symmetry there, if you like. But from the bottom of the block work right up to the top, it was the same dimensions all the way along. So I kept those brick pillars perfectly perpendicular and upright and level. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's all I've got on there so far. 
Oh, and on the section where we're going to tackle the tree, you know, this section here, well, I'm going to put some railings across there, but I'm going to create a railing that looks a little bit like this. So it just scoots around the trunk of the tree. And uh, we're not having a, a logo in that bit. That's obviously the centre one at 2025. I think that'll work. An absolute treat. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, welding this, welding this up whole shebang together it's gonna to be awesome so I was thinking about doing bending my own steel of course to create the HB logo and I started to try and uh, kind of draw it out on here sketch it out a little bit but I just wasn't happy with how the H and the B how they're all anchored to the circle around the outside so in the end I decided if I can get a 700mm piece of 5mm steel then why don't they just laser cut it all out for me and we can have, you know, the proper logo on there that logo that would be way better if we could actually have the words Harrison's Brewery written on it instead of just having the H and the B so that's what I've done that's what we've requested. I've not had a price back yet though, so it might be absolutely stupid and we might decide not to do it, but we'll wait and see. So in the meantime, I'm going to get geared up and do a little bit of welding practice. I've got some fittings here that I think really should be put together. I've ordered them a long time ago and, uh, well, it's about time. It's about time I uh, got them put together. This is the valve which will allow us to take off um, yeast from the bottom of the tanks. So I've got all these to weld together and uh, get kitted out. And also the elbows for the bottom of the other tanks and maybe cut some holes and all that other lovely, lovely stuff. Burn a hole in my jacket while I'm at it, eh? So what I wanted to do while I've got time today is fashion all these pieces of metal together. So we've got the sight glass, which I've taken to pieces. We've got the diaphragm valve. And we've got the... Uh, and we've got the tri-clamp fittings as well, I forgot what they were called, the tri-clamps. So, the diaphragm valve and, well the diaphragm valve is on tri-clamp at the moment, the side glass isn't on anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld a tri-clamp fitting to the side glass so we can put the side glass and the diaphragm valve together. And then on the other end of the side glass, I'm going to install a male RJT and then we'll be on to 2 inch RJT then and then what I will use is this little piece of spare 2 inch tubing and we'll put female like a liner and a nut on each end so that we can move forwards and connect using this piece to the tank and then on the other side to the sight glass. So what I like to do is end prep the material. So if we come in a little bit, it's round the edge on here, it's not perfectly smooth. So what I like to do is hit it up on the sander. So you can see there, there's a little slight gap in between the liner and the actual pipe. So we'll put that on the side, on the sander. We'll try and square this edge off so that when we tack it, that seats with effectively no gap between the two components. Then all we have to do is go around the outside with the TIG welder and just reflow, just reflow the whole seam of steel whilst we're purged internally with argon and that will create a weld without having to add any filler to it. I will have filler there in my left hand in case it's needed, but if you get the fit up right, you're all right. 
you're never going to get a weld that looks better than the fit up after the weld so that's the most important part so I can see I still need to do a little bit more work on the sander to get these square and level So I've just got myself sat down and ready to start on welding these components together and if we just have a little bit of a tour around the table what I'm intending to do so this section here is going to house the liner on either end and of course the two nuts in the middle so what we'll do is get one side tacked on drop the nuts on and tack the other then that will be our adapter to go from male to male on any RJT fittings. These two sections here are either end of the side glass which will allow us to go from tri-clamp to RJT with the side glass in between. The tri-clamp will of course be connected to the diaphragm valve and then on the other side of the diaphragm valve we will have a tri-clamp again to a male RJT and then what we'll have to do on this end when we want to send it elsewhere we'll of course be able to connect up a liner and nut to whatever kind of adapter that we have going there or indeed we could just put a blanking plate on there with whatever fitting we require welded on there, be it a tri clamp, sorry, a cam lock, or just even simply a BSP threaded nipple to allow us to go straight into a half inch hose or something like that. But the key is that we can connect all these components together by using a combination of adapters, so that's what we're going to sit down here and weld up now. So yeah, I think I need to just grind my tungsten. It does look a little bit bulbous on the end. And uh, select some amps, turn on the argon. I'm only gonna be tacking up today because, come on, I don't have much argon left in the tank, so I won't have enough to uh, back purge and finish any, any welds so what I'll do today is just tack as much up as I can and then when the tanks empty we'll take it over to the yard and we'll swap it out for a brand new full one so just using the bench grinder normally burn my fingers or make a hole in my glove doing this Literally the sharper, the sharper your tungsten, without a doubt the neater your welds. So that's pretty good. We'll just pop that back in the torch. Being careful not to, to, not to touch the end of course. Because it will be a little bit hot as we've just had it on the grinder. And then normally for tacking and whatnot, I go for about an eighth of an inch stick out. That's usually more than enough 
for uh, the girls that I go out with. Little pink tip. And uh, because we're using something, we're welding something that's cylindrical, just that little bit of extra tip allows me to work around the workpiece without losing sight. If I lose sight of the end of my torch or where the where the <laughs> the weld is happening, if you like, I always tend to dip the tip in because I, I don't think I'm close enough. So if I can just have a little bit of stick out, it does definitely help. So we've got the welder down here. We're set at the minute to 75 amps, I see. And for tacking, that's probably probably good. I think I'll just tweak it down to maybe 65 and we'll see how we get on. I don't want to blow out the metal, which can be done quite easily. And at the same time, I don't want to be there too long getting that weld, getting that tack established. Otherwise the back side of the weld surface being exposed to air is going to start coking up pretty rapidly. So we're going to take it as it comes at the moment. We'll try, like I say, 65 and we'll see where that gets us. This is really thick steel as well, so I may have to uh, up the current to get that actually welded on. So what I'll do, I'll start on the thinner stuff. And then because we're on the thinner stuff, we should uh, we should find it a little easier to start with a cold torch. Um, let's just get you guys repositioned. Get you into a good position. Get you zoomed in. Let's see if we can't get started. So there's tack number one. Hold the torch there with the shielding gas afterwards to prevent any discoloration. And as you can see, we're on. So what happens, what tends to happen is on one side of the tack, which is there, on the other side, it'll pull it open a little bit. That will, that gap will close if I put some pressure on. So now what I tend to do is make sure we're in the position that I want to be in. Find the opposite side. So if we've just tacked at 12 o'clock, we're looking for six o'clock. And I've pushed down as hard as I can. And there's the tack on the opposite side. So it was a really quick, really quick tack to get that on. And then looking on the inside, you can see the scorch mark from the first one. And if I turn around, the scorch mark from the second and you'll notice that that's all it is, just a scorch mark. There's not any, actually any coking or any deposits there. That will just clean off with a little bit of acid or a wire brush. So now we can continue. We're looking for attack at three o'clock and nine o'clock now. So that one was a little bit more difficult. There was a hairline gap between the two. I don't know if you can see it, but that meant that that hairline gap meant that it was a little bit longer. You can just about see through there, look. And because I was hanging around a little bit longer, you see on the inside of that, that's a little bit of coke in there, but we can get that with the, uh, with the burr on the rotary tool, on the Dremel if you like. This side should offer no such problems because it's tight. So there we go, in and out, as quick as you can. And that folks, is a beautiful looking tack. Just check it out. And inside, again, nothing, beautiful. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'll drop the nuts on, making sure I put them on the right way. So that one needs to go that way, facing down. And this one needs to face up, of course. And then we're going to do the whole thing again by tacking the other liner on to the top. So let's line it up nicely. And we've got 12 o'clock. Rotate. Put the finger inside. Make sure she's all lined up nicely. Tap at six. Tack at three. And tack at nine. Simple as that. So there we have, ready for welding up another day our adapter which will take us from mail to mail RJT. It's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. Right, I'm going to finish off with these and uh, we'll come and have a look when I'm done and uh, then maybe book her off home because it's getting on now. Well this is how far we got boys and girls. Just about to finish off these four elbows and of course Gemma's arrived so I've turned everything off and what we're going to do is jump into uh, jump into the car oh oh we're going to jump into the car and bugger off home today get the vlog up and then do a little bit more paperwork while I'm sat at home we've got the contracts to finish off so I could do with just getting them hammered out this afternoon and then we can go and distribute them. So we've uh, been and picked up a picnic from Morrison's and we've got the stuff in the bag. We've come out to Clumber where it's absolutely gorgeous. We've come down to the little river down here and it's got this beautiful bridge at the side of the uh, ford but Chance absolutely hates it. So Just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he can't walk across it properly. There are some ducky poos, aren't there? Isn't it bloody lovely? Yeah, look at all the weed. Some more hens, or is that a coot? Yeah, I'm just recording you. Poor Chance can't have a wee in peace, can he? Oh, there he goes. Cock a leaky. Oh my gosh, what was it? Oh, we missed it. Let's check the nabs. So the buttercups. Lift your chin up. Let's see if it goes yellow. Oh yeah, look at that. It's yellow under your chin. I can't see. Mm, butter. You do it. <laughs> I'm not eating it. No, I meant put that under you. Uh, I've and got a hairy chin. So it's because you have a beard. Yeah, I'm a buttered beard. What? What about the camera? Kind of glows. Kind of. Kind of. The camera likes butter. YouTube likes butter. <laughs> Can we see the sheep in the distance? The Hebrideans. They've all run away, haven't they, Abs? Yeah. They were all grazing in this gorse or broom. And now they've all baggled off. 
Why are we on our picnic here? Well, because it'll be full of fresh sheep poo here. So let's keep moving on. They're over there, look. They're just through that. Through the trees. They're watching us. A corn maze. It is like a corn maze, isn't it? A maze maze. Made out of broom instead. Just stuff. Oh, can you hear the bees? Yeah, stuff. Hey. Hey. We found some ant houses. I found two more and another. Is there any ants in there? Oh, you found the trail, you found the main home. Watch this then. Why would you do that? I've alerted them. Why? <laughs> Don't, Abby. What is it? The bluebells are still out. <laughs> it's bloody lovely out here, isn't it, Abigail? <laughs> Little bit of hay fever chicken. You might have to have some honey when we get home. I don't even like honey. Oh, I do. I don't. They're not from. So a beautiful purple rhododendron. They look like one whole flower. They do, don't they? But they're not. They are quite pretty, aren't they? I thought they were Very pretty. And there's the lake. Look how close we are to the lake now. Yeah. Didn't expect that, did you? Bubble, we're nearly fell. I did that. Then it went up. We're near the lake and we're near the waterfall. Near the lake, 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 and near the we're near the car. Lake. All in one. So, who wouldn't want to live in a place like that? Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, there's a bridge, and this bridge has a big waterfall or a weir. Wowzers! Check it out. Pretty cool. Hey Dom. Yeah. Hey. Pretty cool pal. Hey Abby. I hope it doesn't rain before we have a picnic. And that tops off Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.